A long and often exhausting journey by two desperate young men from vastly different backgrounds, both united by a singular belief that they can discover the meaning of life through the teachings of Sid, a religious leader and guru from Balham in South London. In a remarkable series of events, they follow the Great One to a small American radio station, Radio WBBBBBBBBB, in Anchorage, Alaska, where Sid has unaccountably made a surprise appearance on the morning program by Erin's breakfast hour. Three weeks without sleep pass by. The Cosmic Kid and A.J. Peterson, the self-styled sons of Sid, were exhausted. They were at the end of their rope. Were they beaten again? Was this the end? Their last tape showed them to be near collapse, but it also contained a fascinating report. Here is that report. WBBBBB Alaska. Good morning. It's 8:15 here on WBBBBBBBBB Alaska, the home of rock and roll music in Anchorage, and I'm Byron Huckster. And welcome to Byron's Breakfast Hour. Our first guest this morning is a man who has recently returned from a trip to continental Africa, where he's detailed his experiences in a best-selling book. He's got a song in the charts, and it's a great pleasure to welcome him here this morning from London, England. The Cosmic Kid. Cos, good morning. Morning, Byron, yeah. Lovely morning, isn't it? You having a good time here? Oh, fantastic. Brilliant city, Anchorage, yeah, love it. Thanks a lot. We're going to look after you and uh, hope you're going to tell us all about your experiences in Africa and particularly in Upper Volta. Oh, Upper Volta. Land of the free, land of the brave. Certainly not the land of the roaming chicken, as I led to believe from your book. Exactly, Byron. That's the point. That's the whole point of the song. Well, let's hear that song. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chicken Farming Ain't No Fun in Upper Volta. Okay, let's hear it. Chicken farming ain't much fun in a border. Things just ain't like they used to be. Chicken farming ain't no fun in a border. Since chickens all went military. One day the colonel rolled right in town. He made us take our chicken fences down. We said, why is this so? We said, it ain't for you to know, cause all your chickens, they belong to me. All our chickens, they belong to him. He said, if you run and hide, you'll all end up inside, cause now all your chickens, they belong to me. Now my chickens are all gone, my wife has left me. Run off to some far and distant place To a man who wears a gun Though I know that he's no But his breadcrumb recipe is really ace Oh, his breadcrumb recipe is really ace He's got guns, tanks, and bombs But he don't have much of them But his breadcrumb recipe is really ace Chicken farming ain't much fun in all the border. Things just ain't like they used to be. Yeehaw! Chicken farming ain't no fun in all the border. Since chickens all went military. Since chickens all went military. Since chickens all went military. Hey, Cos, that is just so poignant. Thanks, Bonnie. So meaningful. I am truly moved. Now here's the weather. It is cold. It's still minus 43 degrees out there. The outlook is cold. Staying cold with temperatures remaining cold. Oh, I've never been to the Arctic, Byron, but I can so here's brass monkeys out there. I don't know about brass monkeys, but I do know it's 825, and you good folks out there in Anchorage ought to be thinking about getting up and cuddling along to work. But hey. Don't bother. Just lie in your bed, snuggle up to your partner, because have we got something hot for you. Oh, devilishly hot, Byron. Kaz has been down to the Caribbean recently, filing his weekly report for the BBC World Service, and we're glad to be able to bring you that item this morning after this word. Hey, thinking of moving house and you're tired of all those endless modern buildings that all look the same? Do you hanker after the traditional, the way it used to be for mom and dad? 
Well, your troubles are over because the good folks over at Mel's Igloos have got a great deal for you. For $30 a month, Mel will give you a luxurious, hand-sculpted, six-bedroom, five-swimming pool property built by Mel's own team of loyal Eskimo craftsmen. Only $9.99 down and three months to pay. Mel's Igloos. Igloos that are built to melt. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. Hello. Welcome to Caribbean Focus. That was a band from Kabunga. They're called Uppi. Uppi have written four trilogies dealing with various subjects, from man's lack of inspiration through to man's quintessential elegance in the ascetic world of the spirit and all pervading the spirit. Deep, I know, but bear with me, because tonight, here in the studio, we have an expert on the current affairs of the western section of the lower portion of the upper echelon of the fourth segment of the third world. He's a fifth columnist, therefore I think you'll agree this man knows what he's talking about when he says bananas are not drumsticks. Hello, Rabbi Bernstein. Well, hello. And I would like to say that, of course, bananas are not drumsticks. There's still work. Recent surveys have proved it. song fun report nice work cause thanks Barbara. great but what you may not realize is that here on byron's breakfast hour we like to tackle the delicate subjects of the other am stations avoid and uh, i must say i was really surprised speaking to you that as an acknowledged fighter for the whole of mankind you were completely unaware of mazola absolutely one ignorant. of the great social problems that we in the free world face today so to enlighten you now here is bud weezer with a very special guest that he had on his show last night bud the first Missoula party we ever found out about was held on a small farm somewhere up in Northern California between Sacramento and Fresno. The local police found, amongst other things, 1,800 gallons of Missoula, 15,000 yards of polythene sheeting, and a number of people in, shall we see a compromising position? These people were very famous and well-connected, and we have one of them with us tonight. He's a man we all know, we all love, we all respect. Hey, it's great to see him here tonight. Won't you please give a warm welcome to Bernie El Lobo Stinkelberg. Thanks. 
I know what you mean. I know what you're talking about. I do, really. Bernie, you're a very perceptive guy. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But I've been allowed to put my side of the story, right? But my career as a police lieutenant in Northern California it was over after that case. Tell us what happened, Bernie. I knew these Missoula busts were going on, and I just said to the boys, Get in there. Get in there, boys. I know what you need. And, of course, they didn't know what the hell I was talking about, so they didn't do anything. What were you talking about, Bernie? Ah, well, I know we needed to go down there, put some surveillance on them, put out a 411, APB, PT-111 progress, stuff like that. But I just said to them, I know what you need. You know what you got to do. And uh, they didn't do it. You served 12 years in Sing Sing, Bernie. You married twice. You've written an opera. You've had 15 kids while you've been inside. And I'm pleased to see your wife Charlene's with you right now in the studio. She's sitting over there in bed. Tell me, how do you feel about life right now? What do you see in the future? I know what he needs. I know what he wants. We're very well suited. Oh, that's great, Charlene. But actually, I was talking to Bernie. No, no, no. Leave her out of it, right? She doesn't know about that case. Tell me something. Bernie, do you think the legislation should be changed to allow Missoula parties? I don't know. I mean, maybe. I mean, what's so harmful about Missoula, oh, right? No. I mean, there's got to be worse things than that, you know? Right, sure. But in that part of the world, they hang you for Missoula. Let's face it, Bernie, a lot of people don't know that much about Missoula. Many of them think it's very harmful. Do you use Missoula, Bernie? Look, 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 I don't want to say I used it. But all right, all right, I know people who use it, sure. But do you eat a lot of fried food, Bernie? Hey, get off my back. All right, I've had chips, I'll admit it. Uh, so what kind of consumption are we talking about here, Bernie? I mean, how much Mazzola do you use? Hey, bud, if you fry your cornflakes like I do, you get to a lot of Mazzola. I mean, I like fried food, so I got a taste for Mazzola. So shoot me. So put me away for 12 years? 12 years of my life? This experience has obviously left you very bitter, Bernie. I ain't complaining. I've done the book and my shoes like yours. I'm not having a bad time now. That's right. I understand you got the part in a new series starring with Dwayne Pimpy and his daughter. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those designer with doctor shows. Hey, what's it going to be called? It's called Miami Slice. Wow. Uh, it's a kind of a stylish, upmarket designer medical program. Hey. All the doctors they wear the Armani coats and the Versace ties and the Gianfranco fairy pants. Hey, that's and chic. the noises. Oh, they wear those Umberto Ginocchetti sweaters and like that. Well, it is important to present the right image, yeah? Yeah, that's right, right? Like, I'm doing this hard operation on this guy, right? And he's wearing a Ralph Lauren t-shirt. Oh? And I get to do the incision right through the little polo pony, leaving with his real glassy scar. Oh, that's a nice touch. Burning. <laughs> like I say, everything is designer. The ambulance is a Ferrari. No, Medina. And the surgical instruments are from Asprey. Oh, wow. Of London? Designed by George Jensen. No, of Stockholm. And get this, the anesthetics? Oh, they're by Chanel. Oh, scratch my eyes out. Bernie, sounds great. When's it going to be out? Oh, it is great. And it's going to be out over here in the fall. Wow. And, uh, I hope it's going to make up for my time inside and... I'd like to so thank too. you very, very much for having me on your show. Well, it's been a pleasure, Bernie. Thanks. You, you're really a nice guy. Thanks, Bernie. Good Th night. Thanks, Alan. Byron Hoxter. Hey, it's time once again to hear from Mary Beth and Dorothy Fernandez of Bemona High, who win our Make a Jingle Contest with this. Now here's the sport. Baseball. Don Gabelhar scored an 18-run bases-loaded homer for St. John's High against the Rabbinical College of Alaska. The RCA Fanatics going down 27-zip in the final there. Losing pitcher was Rabbi Dwight Gooden. W-P-P-P-P-P, Alaska. Good evening, and a really warm welcome to Bob's Big Country, huh? To Firecracker Clinton. One half of the legendary American blues duo, Trent Briggs and Firecracker Clinton. Firecracker, welcome. Howdy. And I was very sorry to hear that your partner, Trent Briggs, has been laid up recently. I understand he's had an extremely severe accident. That's right. That's right. Yes. Well, he was playing steel guitar one night there down in Nashville. He got his dick caught in the strings of his electric steel guitar. It was brand new, kind of fancy, you know, and he had a mouthful of beer, you know, and, well, he burned his dick. Very painful. Yeah. 
And he always burnt his dick on stage, didn't he? Right from the beginning of your career, when he wanted to achieve that very special vocal harmonizing that you do. It's best illustrated on numbers like I trod in it and green paint. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, back in those days, there was a certain sort of kudos attached itself to you for burning your dick on stage. I mean, people these days... You know, I mean, it was like, I saw Phil Spector, okay, and he was saying that burning your dick on stage, you know, it really added to your artistic credibility and your musical standing. But surely Phil Spector was far more well known for his studio dick burnings than the Motown. The Spector wall of burning, sure, but burning dick on stage with a steel guitar, especially. Now that originated down in El Paso, around about the late 20s, something like that. Horror thing, though. No. No. No, it was Marv Spoofdinger, okay? He was the first one. Mm, the legendary Marv Spoofdinger. Yeah, Marv. Right, right. I mean, that guy, wow, that guy. Yeah, what that guy can do with a dead coyote in a dustbin lid, I mean, uh, have you ever seen a furry frisbee? Thank you. Tonight, we have a fascinating documentary for you, shot before Trent's unfortunate accident. And it's about these two men whose contribution to the contemporary music scene in America has been without equal. The legendary country blues rock duo from Hoot Nanny Falls, Arkansas, Firecracker Clinton and Trent Briggs. Those were some days, eh, Firecracker? You know, I can't help but remember every time I think about those days, I remember Holly Jean. Holly Jean. She was married to Marv Spoofdinger. That's the one. That's the one. Gee, she had a pair of tits like nobody's business, like a football cut in half. It wasn't easy for her being married to Marv because he used to burn his dick on stage, just like you used to. Well, hell. I tell you, my insurance has gone up a hell of a lot since then, and the scars have never gone away. The emotional scars of such a thing, you know what I mean? It wasn't long after that, my marriage broke up and, you know, Charlene took the kids away, and, well, life was hellish. That was when I wrote, Baby, don't go away. Don't leave me. And I think... Those lyrics kind of say it all, don't you? They do. They sure do. I mean, do. they say, they say, baby, don't go away. Don't leave me. Well, what can a man say, you know? Yeah. I mean, I told her, I said, okay, you want a portable TV. I get a portable TV. What does she do? She left me. She went away with some schmuck who goes down the health club. Does 50 press-ups every minute. Jeez, I can't kind of sad, but the sound you achieved that night, even though the singeing of your private parts had led to all this emotional upheaval, was astounding. I gotta give you that. I reached a high triple A. Oh, it was sheer brilliance, I remember. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was in fact one of the pinnacles of my creative career. Yeah, but the thing is, you've only got one dick, you know what I mean? It only happens once. I never could master it. Have you ever thought about the possibility that you might have been a eunuch in a previous life and it sort of come back to you? I've often thought that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, do you swallow paint? I don't quite follow your drift there, partner. Well, if you swallow paint, okay. I mean, if you swallow paint. If you swallow, for example, green paint, your ship would turn green. Oh, yeah, I remember. We wrote a song about it. That's right. That's right. 